life is kind of on a knife edge. You just don't know how fine the margin was where things could have been completely different. I definitely had a, a revisiting of, of what I felt like was important and what wasn't important. This opportunity to move to Montana, a lot of things in the universe had to conspire to allow this to happen. You know, things that were not me at all, they were simply forces of nature. I grew up in upstate New Hampshire. My parents built a cabin up in the woods. It had no electricity, no running water. My parents were just hippies. We definitely didn't have any money. They, were, they wanted to be in the woods. They liked the simpler things. I ended up just doing a ton of just outdoor stuff. At a young age, I think it was really cool for me to be able to have that freedom and time on my own in just the outdoors and gives you a lot of chance to figure out a lot of the basic lessons of life. It wasn't just you know, a little bit, it was every day for years and years. I liked skiing a lot right from the beginning. I think I asked to do it a lot. Everybody knew our family, so I could easily hitch a ride into town and then hitch a ride up to the mountain. And it was very common in our area to have hitchhikers. From when I was four or five, I basically skied every day. They dropped me off, or I'd get a ride up and just ski all day and then come back when it's getting dark. I developed this really sort of defiant, stubborn nature. When I was 13, all the coaches, they sat me down, they all sort of said, look, you're, you're bad at skiing, you're lazy, you know, you don't try hard. You're just not gonna be any good. My initial approach was kind of like, you guys, you know? And I wanted to tell them, you know, screw you, at the same time as I knew I had to actually meet a higher level of standards. I think I worked a lot harder. It was all in for racing. My ability was here. What I needed to do was here. And how do you cover that gap? My explanation was, I got to go absolutely apeshit. A little bit wild, but that's Bodie. That's the only way I'm going to do it. Obviously, if I ski normal, I'm going to finish 45th. Like, what good does that do me? And, you know, obviously my personality, I was like, let's send it. Crashing, blowing opportunities. Oh, Miller goes down. Classic Bodie. The approach leaves some questions. And my coaches were like on my ass every day. Like, why are you doing this? Stop making the same stupid mistakes over and over again. He's not in balance. He's not comfortable. He doesn't know where his legs are. He doesn't know where his skis are. I was like, hey, sorry, Chief. It's not like I'm trying to. You think I'm trying to do this? Like, I'm trying to win races and I can't do it. 362, he's gone out of the gate. Only 62% has he reached the finish. And I still, to this day, have the most DNFs in World Cup history by about double what anyone else has. A little bit of trouble there. Miller, down he goes. This rate of finishing is very troubling for me and the coaches. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. It was partly why I kept crashing. Instead of sliding to make a radius, I would just arc and pull it around. I just couldn't pull the radius. And then the one moment that the skis did what I needed them to, I was so far ahead of everyone else, I just was smashing everybody. Great jump there. He's building on his time. Oh! With Miller on the side and back up the antics. Oh. Arms are behind him. That's that typical body technique. Really nice recovery. I think that was my biggest advantage. I had no fear of failure because I'd done it my whole life. That's all I did in skiing was fail, basically. He is completely undeterred by failure. He just wants to win. I won 33 World Cups. Skis with tons of heart. Six Olympic medals. An incredible athlete. Five World Championship medals. Miller loves that feeling of being right next to the edge. And six World Cup globes. Usually he skis to win, to blow away the competition. In the crunch time moments, I definitely was able to, for the most part, I didn't shy away from the moment. I was one of the people who like, threw it in there and was willing to take the risk. 
beeline to the finish, and Miller's got it. I met Morgan in early spring of 2012. She was playing pro beach volleyball. From the day we met till now, we basically haven't been apart. It was kind of a whirlwind and really accelerated version of, of a normal get to know each other, get married and have kids. <laughs> it was like everything happened within like five months. We lost our first um, pregnancy, a miscarriage. That was pretty traumatic and, and really hard on her. But we got pregnant again and had a boy, Nash. Then we got pregnant very quickly with Emmy. She was a, a, just a bull in a china shop. Hi, Dada. Hi, Dada. Just a powerhouse of a kid. I mean, I have, I have a video of her eating the, the foam around the outside of the trampoline where she would just bite it with her teeth like a little animal and just tear it off and spit it out and bite off another piece. I'd been in the water with her all morning with the other boys and we'd been playing and jumping in and she'd you know, have her floaty on and run around the edge of the pool and just launch herself right in and she just loved it. It was a you know, normal day. I left to take my oldest daughter to softball and left her with Morgan and, and Morgan went next door to hang out with her neighbors, which we do all the time. Somehow the door wasn't locked. She snuck out while they were having conversation and you know, Morgan realized it very quickly, but just it all happens very quick. I got a, a traumatized call from our neighbor saying, you know, the baby fell in the pool, come home. And I just had to listen. I mean, that was, you know, I, I, that was like definitely the, the hardest thing just to be, to know that something was going on, listening to the, the people on the phone with the paramedics, listening to kind of the 911 call on the other end and being a half an hour away and knowing that me going there is not doing anything. It's I'm half an hour away, you know, and that was, I think, the worst feeling and the, and the biggest challenge was just like, I, there was nothing I could do. I was, I was away. It's so overwhelming. It's, it's the kind of thing that doesn't really ever go away. The suffering, I don't think, changes at all. You just get more acclimatized to it. It becomes normal for you. It's tough as, as you know, parents to go through that. just so severe it's not something you can easily just you know kind of shift to the side and, and keep pushing through emotionally you're so exposed everything's so raw and you're suffering so badly that you you look at everything much more critically so yeah, after that a loss like that it was it was pretty uh pretty real She died, I was, I felt lucky that I'd spent the time with her that I did, that I hadn't been racing since she was born. That I had the days that were really incredible, even though it was a short time. Afterwards, I think I, I revisited how I was raising my kids, what I was doing, the, the level of commitment I was gonna give to them. You know, sometimes as a parent, you're just over it. You're like, look, I'm tired. Those moments are critical that you really have to do a better job. And I, and I knew from pretty quick that, that it was definitely gonna make me a better parent. You know, it just didn't seem worth the price, really. let me have that 
reset where I was like, I gotta get my, you know, my kids to be able to experience nature, do some of the things that I benefited from. The move up to Big Sky is definitely a result of revisiting those priorities and recognizing that nature in Southern California is not what I wanted for my kids. For me, Montana, it's really pretty raw and it's, it's true nature. Boys. Oh yeah. We're doing it. Nice, dude. Are you balancing with your stick, Nash? <laughs> nice. Do you like this, Nash? Here you go. Yeah, we could move from Montana. Yeah, we could drop this helmet. We could drive our back roads the whole way. And when we get there, we could trade my truck for some horses. Tear down any fence in our way. Just be happy, lonesome, and free. You and me. That's pretty beautiful. Oh, it's really pretty. Everything feels bigger here. When you're standing in these fields and these mountains, you're walking along the river, you feel how small you are. And I'm hoping that by, by being up here, my kids get that appreciation and love for nature. I just feel pulled here. I feel like this is a happy place for me. And I'm, you know, I'm super excited to have, to be able to make this kind of a, a piece of my life.